Welcome back to the Game Collection. I am Super Derek, and this is Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. Persona 2 Eternal Punishment isn't just a clever name. I'll start off this review by first warning you, dear viewer, that this game is not for the faint of heart. It requires dedication, endurance, and for me, about 87 hours, give or take. Unlike the unrestrained raving hype train behind the likes of Personas 3 and 4, the hype behind Eternal Punishment is more of a calm, tempered enthusiasm that's hard not to fall for. But is it warranted? Given the nature of this game being part two of a two-part series, it's hard to talk about the plot in any meaningful way without spoiling parts of part one. So for the sake of everyone who's interested in either title, I'll keep this brief. In Eternal Punishment, you play as Maya Amano, one of the playable characters and potential love interests from Innocent Sin. The game takes place in a setting similar to that of Innocent Sin, before any of this crazy stuff from Part 1 went down. Maya, as a reporter, is tasked with the investigation of a recent string of murders by the Joker, which leads her down quite the proverbial rabbit hole. Along the way, we team up with four new characters, including Nanjo or Ellie, from Persona 1, depending on player choices. Having just come off of Innocent Sin, the first thing I wanted to do was go get my old gang back together and finally settle things. Sadly though, that was not to be. I soon realized that while the two games are two halves of a whole, they do remain two distinct games, to my disappointment. But not because the characters of Eternal Punishment were bad by any stretch, just because I had fallen in love with the tight-knit group from before. And while we do still get to see everyone, those moments are few and pretty bittersweet. But to my credit, it's hard to move on and make new friends when you're still mourning over the loss of the old. Upon this reflection, that really helps put the player into the shoes of Tatsuya, who, in this game, is... Let's just say he's a little different. The individual character arcs for each character in Eternal Punishment are pretty good, my favorite of which belonging to Bao Fu. Conversely, I felt like there was very little in the way of actual character development for Katsuya, whose personality seemed to alter only slightly between what we first see him and the final moments before the credits scroll. Given the persisting theme within the Persona series that everyone wears different masks or Persona or has multiple sides to them, Katsuya ended up feeling particularly two-dimensional in a three-dimensional world. On the other hand, I really did relish the opportunity to spend more time with some of my favorite characters from Persona 1. It was a real treat to see familiar faces and catch up on what the old, old gang had been up to since the conclusion of the first Persona. And from what I've come to understand, this is a trend that we'll get to see throughout the rest of the Persona series, helping every title feel really interconnected and canon to an overarching universe. At the end of my review of Innocent Sin, I stated that I didn't get an ending. For what it's worth, now I've got one. And while the ending I got made total sense, I still don't feel like I got the closure that I had really been hoping for. I'm still not quite satisfied, and maybe eventually I'll come to embrace it, but for now I'm still a little sore over the ending. In regards to the gameplay, I'm afraid that I'll have to compare apples and oranges a bit. The PSP version of Innocent Sin that I played through had been heavily updated and streamlined to remove a lot of the tedium that existed in the previous version. Unfortunately, since the US did not get the PSP remake of Eternal Punishment, I am, for the first time, exposed to some of the original workings of the PlayStation title, and the result is just a few steps backwards to the surprise of no one. This is just a fact that you may want to prepare yourself for should you opt to play the games in the order that I have. The battle system is mostly unchanged, with the exception that player orders now get determined by their agility stats presumably, 
which makes setting up patterns for performing fusion spells a bit tedious because you'll have to rearrange your character's battle order every single round, which can make even regular battles a bit frustrating. Overall though, I would say that Eternal Punishment's difficulty is a little above average, but it should be noted that this game never really took any cheap shots. When my party was wiped out, it was entirely my own fault. But not every change from Innocent Sin is a step backwards. I think that the demon persuasion mechanics made a bit more sense this time around. Rather than having each character have multiple interaction methods, each character has a single method of contact which can be mixed with other characters' inputs which can lead to some really interesting interactions between your teammates. New interaction combinations become available as the plot, and by extension character development, progresses. Graphically, Eternal Punishment is almost identical to Innocent Sin, save for the user interface which is a lot clunkier. Again though, this really only speaks to the great work done to Innocent Sin during the PSP update. The voice acting of Eternal Punishment is not too bad either, but it was rather weird to hear some of the characters lines get bleeped out. Don't underestimate me, you bastard! I guess that was just a product of the times though, but let's just be glad we're mostly past that. So much of the criticism that I have for Eternal Punishment that I would have for Innocent Sin was fixed up so nicely in the port to the PlayStation Portable. Unfortunately, we just never got that PSP port of Eternal Punishment. Well, at least not yet. I've been hearing about a fan translation for the Japanese PSP remake that's currently underway. And when that comes out, I would be happy to revisit Eternal Punishment. And I have no doubts that if that remake was anywhere near as good as Innocent Sin, we're all in for a treat. The original copy of Eternal Punishment comes with a steep price tag, about $70 for a complete copy. But I don't think you would be missing out on much if you opted for the PlayStation Network release for a mere fraction of the cost, about $5. Persona 2 Eternal Punishment is a classic PlayStation era RPGs whose flaws are only amplified by the PSP remaster of Innocent Sin. But it sounds like hope is on the way in the form of a fan translation. I would recommend the PlayStation version only for those heavily invested in the Persona series already, but I would almost certainly endorse a PSP remaster for anyone who's enjoyed Innocent Sin. My recommendation though would be to play through it casually. Take your time with it, not with any sort of, oh, I don't know, self-imposed deadlines, and I'm sure you'll have a good time. And that's why it's got a spot in the game collection.